This is week five of the Whole Food Masterclass. Tonight, I wanted to start with a story about a researcher back in the 1950s. His name may be familiar to some of you. Ansel Keys came up with the lipid hypothesis. And his research showed a correlation between the consumption of cholesterol and saturated fats and heart disease. Since Ansel Keys' work, even in 1961, this was the cover of a Time Magazine article written about the research that Ansel Keys had done not even a decade before this was written, questioning the validity of Keyes' research. And since that time, there have been numerous researchers that have looked at Jesus' work and found it not to be as valid as it was thought to be. Although there was a lot at stake to keep the lipid hypothesis going, things like the medical industry, especially big pharma, and the food industry. So things that were more shelf stable were easier to sell if fats were now bad and to go to more low fat shelf stable items. Unfortunately, the tragedy is that 70 years later, much of the medical community still believes in Caesar's living hypothesis and coronary heart disease is the number one killer. And we certainly know uh, seven years later that there is a lot more to it, and we're going to talk about that tonight. I am Kara Joseph, a whole foods nutritionist, and tonight we're going to be talking about proteins and fats. Okay, so before we get into that, get out your diet logs and a pen. And let's recap the stuff from all the weeks before. So hopefully you are buying more organic food from more or from organic sources, either at the grocery store or maybe you found a local farm that can provide you with some local produce, meat, eggs, even cheese. I'm going to give you guys a minute to find your diet like and just keep talking. Um, no sugar. So that's the first thing you want to do is cut out all the sugar. So hopefully you have your diet log. Look at your diet log. If you have any obvious sugar, circle it. Anything like sugar in your coffee, sweet, maybe you went out to dinner and you had a dessert, maybe you tried some of those gluten-free recipes and added some sugar in there. Any obvious sugar that you might have had in the last Okay, the next one are carbohydrates. So we talked about setting realistic goals last week. And if you're not quite at a half a cup, then circle whatever carbohydrates you had that were over your goal for this current week. So your, your end goal would be a half a cup of refined carbohydrates, but not fruits and vegetables, but things like pasta, crackers, um, any kind of rice that you might be having, any packaged food, any refined carbohydrates that you want over your goal. If you're at the goal of a half a cup, then start transferring, start transitioning to things like buckwheat, quinoa, brown rice, even wild rice is a really great choice. And if you've already started to transition to those alternative grains, congratulations. That's a really great step in the right direction for better health. All right. The next thing I want you to do is look at your diet log and look at how many servings of vegetables you had every day. And this is going to be a guesstimate. I don't want you to measure things out and put measurements on the diet log. This is supposed to be a sustainable program where you're not needing to measure things out all the time. So you're just kind of eyeballing it. An average salad has anywhere from 
two to four servings of vegetables, maybe even more if you had it as the main course. So go ahead and just eyeball each day and see if you got those six half cup servings of vegetables in every single day. And if half of them were raw, then give yourself a stop. All right, did you drink half your body weight in ounces per day? If you're not recording how much fluid you're drinking, then you should start recording that. And if it's anything beyond uh, water, seltzer, or herbal tea, make sure that you put down what else it is that you're drinking. So like soda, fruit juice, coffee, caffeinated tea, all of those things you need to drink an extra cup of water for. So we talked about last week drinking an extra cup for any caffeinated drinks. But definitely, if you're drinking any kind of um, things like soda or fruit juice, that's going to spike your blood sugar and create dehydration. So you want to drink more water after you do that kind of stuff as well. Exercising 15 to 20 minutes per day. This is a realistic goal for everybody. You don't even need to change your clothes. So make sure that you're getting out there and you just move your body for at least 15 minutes. Tracking your progress. Either you're using the app or you can even do it right on the diet lab. Did you achieve the goals that you set for yourself in this current week? And then shopping without a list or cooking without a recipe. These are optional, of course. If you have a system that you like already, then by all means, stick to that. We're all different. We all come from different situations. And go at your own pace. Don't compare yourself against anybody else. You know what your situation is and you know what you're capable of. Set goals that are realistic for you. So if you're really struggling with the water part or with the exercise part, stick with just whatever goal that you think that you can accomplish. Make it something attainable each week. Once you obtain that goal, then move on to the next one. If you have a lifetime to work on this, it certainly didn't take me six weeks to get to where I am with my diet and I don't expect it for you either. All right, we're gonna start with fat tonight. And why do we need fat? So fats are really confusing. They're called a lot of different things and there's a lot of different information out there. So you may have gone to someone who is basing their information off of that research done back in 1950 by Anthony Keyes who's telling you don't eat any kind of fat, stick with a low fat diet. And this is definitely absolutely wrong information. You need fat to have a healthy functioning body. You need it to create healthy cells. Every single cell in your body requires fat to function properly. That right there is a great reason to eat fat. Hormones, hormone production and regulation you need fat for, bile production. So I find this so interesting. One of the largest components of bile is cholesterol. And in order to absorb fat, you need that cholesterol in your bile to be able to do that. Feeling good. Consumption of fatty acids creates serotonin in your brain and it gives us that feel good sensation that everybody wants, of course, and it helps with mood regulations and emotions just in general. Brain function, who doesn't want better brain function? Babies, babies need lots of fat, and if you analyze breast milk from mothers, it's very high in cholesterol because those babies need that for proper growth and development. Immune function, and absorption of other nutrients like A, D, E, and K. Okay, so there's two categories of fats, harmful fats and helpful fats. I'm gonna make this super, super easy for you. As a nutritionist, I sometimes find fats fascinating, but also super confusing. And I can't imagine anyone else looking on the internet or shopping and all the different terminology that's out there. It just makes you feel like you're swimming in the sea of all this lingo that you just 
not really sure where to go with it and what's right and what's wrong. So I'm really going to dumb this down tonight. So fats, harmful fats, helpful fats. Harmful fats we're going to start with first. Those are trans fats, canola oil, and triglycerides. Helpful fats are fatty acids. Okay, so trans fats. These are the bad guys. Fried food, packaged food, canola oil, margarine. You'll also find it in things like microwave popcorn, that's kind of sneaky, and some different types of shortening. So fried foods. Trans fats are also hydrogenated oil or partially hydrogenated oil. These are all the same thing and treat them the same. Just get them out of your diet and avoid them. Commercial restaurants like to use trans fats in their fry layer. And the reason being is because if you have ever worked at a place where they use one of those giant fryers for things like donuts and fried chicken and french fries, it has got a tremendous amount of fat in it. And you don't want to be emptying that thing out every single day. So in order to keep it fresh, stop it from going rancid and making your food taste bad, they use hydrogenated oil so that it won't go rancid it can be used for a long time before they have to exchange it out. That's great for the restaurant business, but it's really horrible for your body. And the FDA has now made trans fats or hydrogenated oil, the same thing, not considered safe for human consumption anymore. So that's really, a, that's a huge to understand that even the FDA has come out with this statement. Packaged food, so even though the FDA has said trans fats are really bad and we're not gonna consider them safe anymore, and there's a lot of horrible things that they consider safe, packaged food, if it has less than a half gram of trans fats per serving, then they can get away with saying on the front of the package, it has no trans fats. So you really have to turn those packages over and look at the actual ingredients. And if there's anything in there that says hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated blank, put it back on the shelf. Because what can happen is if it says that there's a half a gram per serving and there's 10 servings in there, you've now just gotten five grams of that hydrogenated oil that you need to not bargain on. Okay, next one is canola oil. So canola oil is also tricky. Because it's so highly processed, it actually gets developed into trans fat while it's being processed. So you can get away with saying, oh, this is a, not a trans fat product, but the end product does end up having trans fats in it. And it's also usually a GMO product, so just stay away from it altogether. Margarine has trans fats in it. Some microwave popcorns, not all of them, but some of them do, and some shortening. So just flip the packaging over and read the label and make sure it's okay. All right, the bad news about trans fats and why you absolutely want not to eat at all. It's not worth it to have your french fries at McDonald's. The half-life of trans fats are 53 days. So that means that it takes several months for trans fats to actually get out of your body. That's just half of it getting out. And the real evil here is that your body doesn't recognize the difference between the trans fat and the good fatty acid. So it will take it and use it to produce new cells. Your cell, it's the cellular membrane that the body puts the trans fats into. And that's really important because that cellular membrane has to have a certain electrical charge to work properly. But because the oil has been hydrogenated, that electrical charge is no longer in the right structure and it, yet the cell doesn't function properly. Can you imagine how many cells a donut fried in trans fat feeds and creates in your body? That is horrible. You have all these poorly non-functioning cells in your body because you can that definitely not worth it. Okay, the last one is triglycerides. So triglycerides are not something that you're getting from food. It's something that your body is making. And triglycerides are really the, the storage house for glucose. Not a bad thing in the right amount. 
So what happens is triglycerides are created by the consumption of things that are turned into glucose in the body. So any kind of carbohydrate or sweet, so cookies, um, any kind of like cake, any obvious sweet, and then any kind of carbohydrate like bread, rice, baked goods, pasta. So what happens is when you eat those types of foods, you usually get more glucose than you need at that moment. So your blood sugar rises, your body says, I don't need all of this stuff right now, and I'm going to send it to my liver to be stored as a triglyceride. That's great, but that is what high levels of triglycerides is what's really harmful to your heart and to your liver as well. So you want to keep that in mind, and one of the reasons why you want to skip to having just a half a cup of carbohydrates every day versus that big load of pasta or bread or whatever it is because it is harmful to the body. Okay, fatty acids. So fatty acids are the good fats that you do want to be eating and are not going to be harmful. They're actually going to be helpful to your body. And these are categorized by two different things. And this is where it starts to get confusing. You definitely don't need to memorize this but it's really good to know to, to, to make all the terminology understandable. So fatty acids are broken down into two categories. Their bond structure, which is going to be either saturated, polyunsaturated, or monounsaturated. And then their length. So are they short chain, medium chain, long chain, or very long chain? So if you think way back to chemistry class that you did in fourth or fifth grade, you learn about molecular structure. So the chain is the molecular structure of whatever fatty acid we're talking about. Okay, we're gonna go over this again because I think this is just so important. Why do you need fat? Healthy cell membranes and cellular function. Remember those bad fats create bad cell membranes that don't work. So they don't allow the right things in and out. And good fats create strong lipid membranes on your cells that do work and keep you healthy. Hormone production and regulation, absorption of fat through bile, feeling good. Who doesn't want to feel good? Brain function, who doesn't want to think better? Babies need lots of it for growth and development, and so do we. Immune function and absorption of other nutrients. Okay. Saturated fats. These guys get a really bad rap, but they're really important in your body. And we're going to just go over that, you know, go by that general list of why you need fats. And you need a good variety of different fats in your diet so that you get all of the stuff that you need from all the different fats. So the first one is saturated fats that comes primarily from animal fats that would include eggs and dairy and coconut oil. monounsaturated fats and again so the the monounsaturated is just we're talking about a different structure of a fatty acid but it's still considered a fatty acid these are things like olive oil avocados and avocado oil pecans cashews and peanuts polyunsaturated fats these are the omega-3 and omega-6s, and there's been so much press on these guys recently because we have discovered the importance of omega-3 fatty acids in our bodies, but the lack of it in our diet. So where do you get omega-3 from fish? You're gonna see a lot of information about other places that you can get omega-3s, but there's really not enough of it to, to make it important in your diet. The only place that you're going to find a good level of omega-3 fatty acids are in dark, fleshy fish. So that's going to be things like blue fish, salmon. If you're not a fish lover or you just don't feel comfortable eating fish, that's fine. Get some kind of fish supplement, so fish oil. Calamari oil is really great. Krill oil is really good. 
and any kind of peanut oil. But you want to be very careful about where you're getting that from. Standard process is the best source for this stuff. There, they make sure that it doesn't have um, any kind of heavy metals in it. And it's really important what kind of fish they're sourcing it from. And then Carlson's also traditionally has a very good reputation for their quality of fish oil. So if you're doing supplementation, make sure that you're getting a really clean source. Otherwise, you're getting other stuff in there that you don't want to put in your body. Omega-6. Omega-6 is not something that you should be worried about getting. This comes from vegetable oil, and the average diet gets a load of omega-6. So don't even worry about getting enough omega-6. It's omega-3 that you want to worry about. And what's really concerning is that omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids have the same receptor sites. So if you're eating a whole bunch of omega-6 and you're flooding those receptor sites with omega-6s and there's not a good balance of omega-3s, you're going to have an imbalance and problem um, with your health. So you want to make sure that you get in those omega-3 fat acids. Butter, interestingly, is a great fat to be using because it has a perfect balance of omega-3 and omega-6. Omega Quant blood test. If you are interested in seeing what your omega 3 levels are, you can order this on our website at ceremonialwellness.com. It's an easy finger prick test, and you just send it away in the mail, and you get a nice report back on not only what your omega 3 levels are, but things like um, your trans fat levels in your body. So if you recently gotten off of eating trans fats, you can see kind of where you're at with that. Gallbladder problem. So this is a special issue, but certainly one to be noted that if you have had your gallbladder removed in the past, or you have gallbladder issues where just you have digestive problems if you don't absorb or digest the fat very well, I would highly suggest that you make an appointment to come and see us to help with fat absorption and digestion because of the gallbladder issues. So even if you've had your gallbladder removed, you do make bile, but the gallbladder is what secretes the right amount of bile at the right time. So for example, if you eat a hamburger and you had a healthy functioning gallbladder, the body would say, hey, gallbladder, you store all the bile. Let's put out a whole bunch of bile right now because we've just had this nice, fatty hamburger, maybe with some cheese on it, and an avocado, and you want to absorb all that wonderful fat for good cell production, and if you don't have a gallbladder, then your the bile is still being produced by your liver, but it's not the right amount that's being regulated, so you can't possibly absorb all that great fat that you're eating at that time, so that severely affects your health and digestion because you're not able to digest it either properly. So I would highly suggest making an appointment to come and see us. But in the meantime, eating things like butter and coconut oil, you don't need your gallbladder or bile to be able to absorb those two fats. Those would be short and medium chain fatty acids. You don't need the gallbladder to be able to utilize it. All right. If you're totally confused and you're wondering, what on earth can I be eating? Well, let's get to that. So, whole foods. Eat things that have one ingredient. Avocado, olive oil, oranges, bananas, beef, chicken, fish. All of this stuff comes from nature. Buy things that you recognize as coming from nature and in the whole form. Things like soy burgers, veggie burgers, packaged meals, anything at the bakery aisle in the grocery store are not in their whole form, are not natural products, and are not part of a whole food diet. All right, good fats and if you don't remember anything about this class, just take this away with you about what 
fats are good to incorporate into the diet. So things like coconut oil, butter, sesame oil, avocado oil, these are all beautiful fats that should be in your diet. They also have a high smoke point. So that means that they can be used with high heat to cook with. So if you're doing any kind of stir fry or stir pot cooking or boiling, these are the fats that you want to be using. Olive oil, depending on what type of olive oil you're using, it can also have a high smoke point, but traditionally, most olive oils you should be using on a low to moderate. Dark fleshy fish, so that's that blue fish and that salmon, nuts and seeds, uh, uh, olives and avocados are really great to incorporate into your diet. Raw milk and cheeses. So raw milk and cheeses, like we learned before, those have the enzymes intact that help you digest the milk protein. If you do have a sensitivity to dairy, then you want to avoid them. But if you don't, they're a really great source of wonderful fats. And eggs, and eating the whole egg is really, really important because the egg white does have nutrients, but it's the egg yolk that has those good healthy fats that you want to incorporate into your diet. How much fat should I be eating? There's really not a limit to how much fat you can be eating. Your body will normally self-regulate self how much you're eating. You're not gonna go eat an entire stick of butter or an entire jar of coconut oil. It just doesn't, you don't, it doesn't happen. You'll eat a tub of ice cream, a loaf of bread, but you won't do this with fat. Fat does not make you fat. This is a really good takeaway point. It's the carbohydrates that are making you fat, not fat itself. Eat at least some fat every day. If fat is making me nervous, I don't want to be eating too much fat. I'm certainly not suggesting having scoops and scoops of coconut oil or bowls of olive oil, but a healthy serving during the day is just fine. So use it to cook with, use butter on your bread if you're having toast in the morning, eat things like avocados, all good food. All right, on to protein. Proteins are the building blocks of the body and are really important for things like skin, a muscle. They're essential for normal functions and for hormone production, just like fats are, and for enzyme, enzyme use and production. So you need enzymes to create chemical reactions in your body, and that's really your body's functioning. So in order to digest food, you need enzymes. In order to create energy, you need enzymes. Important for every function in your body. Where should you get the protein from? Plants or animals? This is a big debate. I say both are good. They both have merit and they're both good sources of protein. Organic, not processed, is really where your focus should be, not whether it's animal or plant. Certainly things like the soy burger, not a good source of protein. It's a highly processed product with GMO products in it and pesticides, but something like um, straight beans, great. More animal than plant protein, and here's the reason why. Proteins are just a bunch of amino acids put together. There are 20 total amino acids that your body needs to function. Nine of them are essential. So that means that they're not made by your body and they have to come in your diet somehow. So kidney beans, if you eat kidney beans, you're getting three different amino acids. That sounds okay, but there's 20 that you need on a regular basis. Nine obviously are essential, but the other 11 are also important to incorporate into your diet, even though your body's making them. But if you eat some kind of animal protein, like raw milk or beef or chicken, that has the full complement of amino acids in it every single time. So 
more meat protein than breakfast. How much protein should you be eating? All right, so again, this is the same thing. There's no limit. Your body's gonna self-regulate. It's just like vegetables. You're never gonna go crazy and OD on spinach. The same thing with chicken and fish. Nobody's eating an entire salmon. Eat at least half your body weight in grams of protein every single day. So a palm size serving. So your palm, that size of protein is about 20 grams. So if you weigh 120 pounds, you're looking for at the low limit, the low end, 60 grams of protein a day. That would be getting at least 60 grams of protein. That would be three complex servings of protein every day. You certainly could eat more than that. And if you're doing any kind of exercising or repair from, say, a surgery, you definitely want to have more protein because your body's going to be utilizing more of the amino acids for the repair work and for the protein. Whole Foods Diet. This is the end of week five, so hopefully by now we are all with the understanding of what a whole foods diet is, but if you're not, it's very simple. Anything with one ingredient, things like vegetables, fruit, protein, that's animal and plant protein, nuts and seeds, make sure it's organic and as minimally processed as possible. All right, the goals for this coming week Start buying organic if you haven't yet. Reduce your carbohydrates to a half a cup every single day. Switch to alternative grains like buckwheat, quinoa, and brown rice. Six half cup servings of vegetables a day or more. You can definitely have more than that. Three to five palm size servings of protein every single day. So this is new. Remember more animal protein than plant. No sugar. Drink half your body weight in ounces every day. Exercise 50 to 20 minutes every day. Write down what you're eating. Track your progress and then shop without a list. Try cooking without a recipe. Those options. Go at your own pace. Remember, you have a unique situation that only you know what you can accomplish. Don't make Milwaukee goals. Make goals that you can accomplish and feel really good about and celebrate at the end of each week that you have actually made a step forward in making yourself healthier. And don't stop moving forward. Print out the list of goals from the video slide, put it on your fridge, and just check off each one as you get through with it. This may take you three months, this may take you 12 months, it may take you the next two years. It doesn't matter as long as it's just you have to make yourself just a little bit healthier every single week. Your body is amazing. You get the right fuel. 